Shannon, do you have any problem with Angel Reese's taunting of Caitlin Clark? I have no problem whatsoever. Skip, I want to preface everything that I say. Caitlin Clark was sensational. She should have been a unanimous player of the year. Nobody should have got any votes. If you look at the way she played all year, and if she solidified that, she answered all the questions, she checked all the boxes in the tournament, she should have been a player of the year. So, young lady, what you did, what, how you represented the game of college women's college basketball, you should be commended. So I don't want you to take anything that I'm about to say personal, because this is not about you. That's fair. I agree. Go ahead. This is about the portrayal of how women, we see it two different ways. 48 hours ago, when, 48 hours ago, when, she, when Caitlin Clark did this, uh, uh, John Cena, it was considered swag. 48 hours later, Angel Reese does the exact same gesture, it's classless. Keith Oberman went as far as to say she was an idiot, not just an idiot, an effing idiot, for you to stoop so low to call, a, to call a, a college kid, a female, because she did a gesture. When you didn't say anything, when Caitlin Clark did it, it's funny how, Skip, it's funny how America, society sees black and white. White person does the exact same gesture. Skip, you know one of the greatest talkers in NBA history, you covered the guy, was Larry Bird. He was never criticized. One of the greatest talkers in NFL football is who? Phillip Rivers. He was never criticized. Angel Reese talked about this all year. Skip, if you don't, if you remember 48 hours earlier, Don Staley foretold of this. Many chalked it up as being sour grapes because she had lost. And lo and behold, everything that she spoke of came to fruition the moment Angel Reese did that gesture. The moment she did this and the moment she started uh, uh, pointing at her finger talking about she's about to get a ring, mm -hmm. Twitter went mm -hmm. and it started trending and it went into a haywire. And I was just there to read the comments. I, I didn't want to see the comments. Skip, a lot of these women in college basketball, a lot of the black athletes, they have their hair like, they have their light lashes on, they have, their, they have their nails done. There are a lot of them are tatted up. Some of them had dreads. So they don't project the role. And like she said, I don't fit your image. I don't fit the box that you want me to fit in. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool with that. Angel Reese is what we call, she said unapologetically me, she meant yep. unapologetically black. Yes. And she's talking about the little black girl, don't you feel some type of way? Mm -hmm. You represent who you are, you stand proud, and yep. you stand on what you believe in. Skip, this was a great game. And unfortunately, Skip, we're not really talking about the demolition job that they did. It was a great game for LSU. Yes, yes, yes. Was, Skip, I mean, it got close. That Kalen Carr came down and hit a couple of three. Did you ever really? No, 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 really no. no. They had spent their wad Friday night beating South Carolina. They did. But Skip, I mean, how do we, it's so obvious what this is. But Skip, this is not about anything else other than race. And I wish, I wish we didn't have to talk about it. I wish you and I could come out here and talk about what a great game. And Kim Mulkey, she did an unbelievable job. She in does. only her second year. Yep. She put LSU, they're a power now. People got to respect this basketball, women's college yep. basketball program. She's one of the two or three greatest coaches, probably Geno, Coach Pat Summit. now you got to go Kim Mulkey, the second, third greatest college female basketball coach in history. I'll buy that. And but what, what we're talking about, because right down the middle, we see two different gestures. And one is, is a celebration, it's celebrated as, whoo, it's celebrated. The other is condemned. And why? Only because a black did the exact same gesture that a white female did 48 hours earlier. Skip, now don't forget now, you know, Caitlin Clark been talking that ish. All, you remember her and the, uh, the Louisville player got into it? Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody know that swag. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Caitlin Clark, she liked that. That's the mamba mentality. Mm -hmm. Everybody was loving it. You're down 15, shut up. <laughs> Angel Reese, Angel Reese can't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Angel Reese do that. Why, why are you doing that? You're not an NBA this night. Yada, yada, yada. They have so much negativity to say. Is that our expression? We've always been very expressive. Jack Johnson started this. Jack Johnson started this in 1900, Skip, when he would beat their white heavyweight champions, and they hated it. Mm -hmm. And they came up with these chump charges to get him. They really despised Muhammad Ali, Skip, because he was a lyricist with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry that we're here. I'm sorry that I cannot give LSU the due respect that they deserve their women. Well, you can, though. You are. Yeah, I, I, I want to yeah. so bad, Skip, but it overshadowed. Skip, that's what, that's, I mean, that thing, I mean, when Angel Reese said that, that, Skip, that thing got 20, 30 million views. I'm like, what? All because she did this, all because she pointed to a ring? 
It's trash talk. It's a part of the game. But white trash talk and black trash talk, Skip, is viewed entirely different, mm -hmm. and we know why. It has been for many, many, many years. Okay, I preface everything I say by the fact that I became an Angel Reese fan about a month ago, for sure. I've been following her all year, but mm -hmm. happened to watch a game with our man Lil Wayne at his place, watched his LSU Tigers, and he is over the moon about this team and this player. Mm -hmm. He loves him some Angel Reese. And that day as I watched, so did I. I, I like her body language. I like her charisma. Mm -hmm. I, I like her, her Im overall impact on a game because she is a double-double machine. And I will remind you, remember, she transferred from Maryland right. just this yeah. for this year. Because I think she's from Maryland. She is. And in the three times at Maryland that she played Caitlin Clark's team at Iowa, they went 3-0. and So she has beaten her right. pretty regularly, mm -hmm. soundly, right. before. Okay, so I got a whole lot to say about this. I'll start from the end to, to the, the taunting. Mm -hmm. I also had zero, zero <laughs> problems with this because of what Caitlin Clark is. Why is she the best player in women's college basketball? Because she is a miniature Larry Bird. You grew up loving Larry Bird. I did. Absolutely. I know all about Larry Bird. He was the trash talker of his generation. He didn't do it overtly. He did it covertly. Right. I covered Mark Aguirre in Dallas, and he used to just pour his heart out to me as, he's always in my ear. He's always telling me, you ain't, you know what? Right. And, and he turns <laughs> right around and backs it up. Yes. He'll say, I'm about to hit this in your face. And he hit it in my face. <laughs> and Mark Aguirre was intimidated in awe of Larry Bird. Yes. When Mark Aguirre was at DePaul, he was the baddest man on the block, who remember? And yes. he had a big block yeah. behind him. Yes, he could put his caboose in people. Okay, that's Larry Bird. This is the same Larry Bird who I was told by an eyewitness in the locker room in Dallas in 1986 mm -hmm. at the All-Star Saturday celebration with all the three-point right. contests. Yeah. There were, was it four other black guys mm -hmm. in the three-point contest? Yeah. And he asked them, face to face, which one of you you know what, <laughs> is going to finish second. And he got away with it because it was 1986. I don't know. And it was Larry Bird. And by that point, he had proven that he was just Larry right. Bird. And once you back it up, as you know, game respects game. Yeah. And, and he transcended his paleness. Right. Where, where the black guys are like, yeah, he's yeah. that guy. Right. And I think basically that both South Carolina and LSU – decided she's, she's just it yes. because they all they, they were raving. She is great. In, in, in fact, Alexis Morris said after the game, who covered her, and I'm about to make a point about Alexis Morris, she said she's changing the way the game is played right now. So she's got a little Steph and a little Larry Bird. The problem is she's only six feet tall. Larry's 6'9", right. right. so, so Larry could dominate. But remember, I was there in the front row at Salt Lake City when magic. Larry Bird took on magic, mm -hmm. and it literally lifted up. Yes. The final four lifted up March Madness. It wasn't even called March Madness. It was just the NCAA tournament. tournament. Yep. It was little at that right. point, and it was kind of obscure at that point. And all of a sudden, because you had black and white, it put it on the map. Right. And Larry Bird wasn't great white hype. He he became great white hope, as right. in legit. Right. He was right? college player of the year. He was a college player of the year. And he couldn't deal with Magic and Gregory Great Kelser Kelser. because it was two against one, basically, because he had four guys from wherever they were from, yeah. Yeah. Indiana State, yeah. and he was from French Lick, Indiana. They're all salesmen now. None of them played the NBA. They're all salesmen, and they had no shot. And yet, Larry went to play for Bobby Knight and lasted about five minutes and right. said, I ain't taking this stuff. Yep. So he wound up at Indiana State and lifted them all the way up into the championship game. Okay, so the point is, what I like about Caitlin Clark is she's got a little, if I may, SH to her game because yeah. she's got a little edge to oh, yeah. her and she is capable of doing this right. and she's capable of a little comment here and there. Right. And then they decided there are a couple of the South Carolina players they were not going to honor shooting the basketball. So at one point, she just waved her yes. hand like, I, I'm not going to do this. Yes. I'm not going to guard you. Yeah. And it's, it's a little bit of an intimidation tactic. Once upon a time, I was at the in, uh, the uh, NBA Finals. This is 2013, and I remember the great Greg Popovich, who's about to go in the Hall of Fame, 
Remember, he would wave off his players. He would stand up and wave them off LeBron. Just let him shoot that. Wave them off. Okay, is especially it in, 20, in 2007 when he was a rookie. Okay, when he that was, really, was just... really when he did it, but he was still doing it in yeah. 2013 because I was there and saw it happen. But my point is, is it a psychological tactic? Maybe a little bit. Is it disrespectful? I don't know. It's just gamesmanship. Right. It's just what it is. Okay, so Kaylin Clark, just, it's to the victor go the spoils. So yeah. she can do whatever she wants to do. I got one small issue. And I am not a lip reader, so I don't know if I'm jumping to the wrong conclusion. Some people I see on some bloggers or, or different websites are jumping to the conclusion that she did say a word to Caitlin Clark that was not cool. Okay. If, in fact, she did that. But I, you're going to have to look at it and okay. tell me if she said it. I don't know. Okay. I, I, she could have been saying something that I don't, I don't know what she was saying. Right. But it looked like she might have been saying this word. And if she did say it, then that's not cool. Right, okay. But the rest of it is totally cool because it, it, it's what Caitlin Clark asked for it and she right. got it, right. okay? Because I got to tell you, Alexis Morris, I, I don't know how much people watch this game closely, but well, Alexis took Morris took the game over in the second half. And guess what she was doing, ladies and gentlemen? She was guarding, guarding Caitlin Clark and running the offense and making yeah. mid-range jump shots. Yeah. Would you believe that? Very quietly, Alexis Morris in the second half scored 19 points to Caitlin's 14. Right. Well, Caitlin got 14 in the first quarter, and I think Alexis Morris is going, oh, my right. God, I don't know right. if I, uh, what can I do? But remember what she said, though, Skip. She said, you're not going to disrespect us okay. like you did South Carolina. She said it before the before game. Before the okay. game. It wasn't she, no she after. Did. Okay. All right. So she, she was the one who took the game over, and if, <laughs> I would have loved it even more if she had done what Angel did. Right. She she deserved it. Alexis Morris, and right. she's been in four different programs, mm -hmm. and she's had her problems. You can look them up. But she came all the way around. She got a second chance with Kim Mulkey, and she was actually the best player on the floor in the second half. Right. And remember, Angel had a nice game, 15 and 10, but she's she was in foul trouble. But but she was in foul trouble, and she became the fourth leading scorer mm -hmm. on her team because. Yep. Uh, Jasmine Carson in the first half went out of her mind shooting threes perfect. and then her her fifth three, I'm pretty sure she didn't call glass, but she was unconscious. <laughs> she was. And it went in. Yeah. And if you get her going in the first half and then Alexis going for mid-range in the second half, Iowa is going to have a hard time. And they were completely, to me, overmatched. And it was never really close. No. To me, go yeah. away. Oh, but I'm like, like you said, Skip, this is where we are now, and it really shouldn't be this way. It was, Skip, and here's the thing. I'm not the biggest Kim Mulkey fan because of the lack of the support that she gave, gave BG and the way she treated BG at Baylor. So I'm not her you biggest... Know what? I, I forgot about that, but you're right. So That kind of came and went. Yeah, but Skip, so I'm not her biggest fan. All right. But after the way I was seeing it was going and how they was labeling yep, the yep. LSU players, good oh, now all of a sudden, I disregard... I, later for Kim Mulkey. I don't care who the coach is. Okay. I'm rooting for you. Let's go. Let's go, Angel Reese. Come on, girls. Let's get this. Let's get this. Because I, hey, I had seen enough. I had heard enough. Because I had saw, I had, I saw it start to build yeah. against South Carolina once they beat South Carolina. Yeah. I said, I see what y'all doing with this. I see what y'all here with this. So now I'm talking to my sister. Come on, Angel Reese. Ooh, I need you to have 30-30 game. I need, hey, I don't really know their players. The only one I really know is Angel Reese. Yeah. Because like I said, she, she laced. She got her hair. Got her hair. She got her nails. She got them jails on. She got the eyelashes. So, I, she, you know, she got the uh, 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 the, uh, the leg and one up high. Yep. Nothing on the other side. So, I'm, let's go, girl. You look, look at, hey, like Flo Joe. Listen, and she, but she can play. She can play. She plays. She can play. She plays hard. 35 double doubles. Ooh. I mean, she had, what, only one, I think, one game? Because I think there was what yep. ended up being like. So, she basically had a double double the entire season. Yeah. Skip, it's just, at some point in time, it's just the way it is. I mean, we see Tom Brady do some things. And that's passion, his desire, his will to win. Cam Newton does the very same thing. He's dividing the team. He's tearing the team down. Come on, people. It's the same thing. We saw T.O. T.O. didn't want to win. He's, he's, he's been divisive. Yeah. Dad didn't want to win. He's been divisive. Why can't his passion, he want to win and say, hey, God, give me the ball. Come on, baby. I can make this happen. Nope, that's not how we see it. We see that we can look. It's funny, Skip. How do we look at two, the exact same thing? The exact same gesture. Skip, it's not like, well, she did one gesture and she did another. We saw the exact same gesture, and we come to two different conclusions from the same gesture. Yep, I got it. So, the white elephant in the room was, 
for once, we had, starting with the South Carolina game, we had five black starters against five, five white starters. Correct. So, so it, it's unusual we would have that. Right. In fact, I'm sitting back thinking, wait, the last time I saw something like this, I got to hark back to 1966 Texas Western West versus Kentucky, Kentucky, except it was the, the roles oh, were flipped, right. right? Yes. It was the first time we saw an all-black starting team mm -hmm. against the notoriously racist program coached by Adolph yeah, Rupp, Rupp, right? Yes. At Kentucky. All right. Now, allow me to get this off my chest. Okay, so Angel Reese says, her last quotes are about that, that. That's what I can just brag on. Twitter can say what Twitter can say. I love reading these comments. I, I have all the screenshots of what everybody has said about me all season. What are you going to say now? Okay, here's my issue with this. She is mostly responding to me, to Twitter right. commentary. I don't know who these people are because I consider Twitter a hate platform. It just, in the end, is, isn't it just a hate platform it, it, for the most part? They spew a lot of, different, a lot of things. Okay, a lot gets spewed on there. Okay, who is spewing? Because I don't know for sure. Are they KKK members? They could be. Right. Are they Proud Boys? They could be. Right. I don't know what they are. Or is is that who's setting the tone here? No, who's skip, creating the you know, narrative? Some, some of them, uh, I, I think that we're being too dismissive. Because a lot of those people don't wear hoods. A lot of those people, the doctors, a lot of those people, the okay. lawyers, well, a lot you, of those okay. people, the police, are right. ordinary people yeah. that one, you might think, Skip, it's amazing. Now, you know yeah. when you skip, you get behind that screen, you're dealing with anonymity. Absolutely. Okay. You're dealing with anonymity. So I get to say whatever I want to say with impunity. Yep. Okay. You and I don't because we got the blue check mark. Well, my blue check mark about to go away. I don't know about yours. Maybe you're going to pay 8 to $12. I, I, I ain't not. got it. I am not. <laughs> I ain't got it. My money funny. Okay. But when Angel says, all season she's hearing the narrative, I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Fr from whom? Right. Because it wasn't from, remember, j just, I'm not defending Iowa, but but they don't talk But before the game. It's not like they're taking shots saying, they're too hood, they're right. too ghetto, or no. they're this or they're that. Th they don't do that. Because, Skip, you know, the thing is, you know, she got a little ponytail, and she don't yeah. have any tight tattoos, yeah. and she don't have no eyelashes, and she yeah. don't have a, a lot of these black girls, they have their makeup done. And so they're like, well, see, this is what sports is all about. Are you going to a beauty contest, or are you playing the game of basketball? Well, these sisters, these young sisters, African-American sisters coming out there saying, wait, we're going to look good, play good. That's what time say, look good, play good, okay. play good, they play good. Well, well that, didn't, that didn't hood to me. That's classic. I know, but, <laughs> but see, but that's the thing, though, Skip, because they have, some of them have, I, you know, I didn't see any tattoos on Angel, but some, a lot of them have tattoos. They have their hair yeah. in locks. They have their hair in dreads. And that's not what normal, that's what not white mm. America don't think is, yeah. is in. Yeah. So they label it, oh, that's ghetto, that's thug, that's hood. Okay, I got No, so that's just me. Yeah. Can I be me? You be you. Okay, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got no problem with Kalen Carr with the ponytail. I ain't got no problem with anybody with however. I'm looking at the basketball player. How you dress out there, you can have one a red shoe, one blue shoe. Yeah. Can you put the ball in the basket? Yeah. Can you block? Can you defend? Yeah, can whatever what whatever, whatever they ask of you, can you do that? That's all I care about. Yeah. In the end, LSU deserved to win this yeah. game because they played better, they shot better, they rebounded better, they defended yes. better. They were clearly superior. Yes. They were just a better team, and they were better coached. Yes. And I honor that and accept that, and I got no problem with it. Again, if you win, Skip. you can talk. Skip, you know how it goes. If you're the best player, whatever gesture, they, st they still Steph Curry shimmy. Not everybody shoot. They do so they get they get him, they're going to turn and shoot the shot and turn and run up the court. They're going to shimmy. They're going to do LeBron's silencer. If they get a and one, they're going to hold their arms up. That's, yep. that's just the way it is. Yeah, the first cultural <laughs> clash I saw this. Remember the Cotton Bowl in like '91? Remember this, where it was Texas versus Miami? Okay, yeah. And it was the U. Yeah. And the way the U celebrated, oh, yeah. beating Texas. It's like, oh my God, the and, world has ended. And then you remember that? What was '87 when they had the yeah. convicts versus the Catholics? They did. Uh, it was Notre Dame yeah. against Penn State. the U. Yeah. No, it's no, Notre no. Dame against the U. Was it? Yeah. I, I was thinking. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, you're talking about that. I'm thinking yeah. of the. The oh, championship oh, you're game. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. That was, the, that was the Fiesta Bowl, yeah, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. And they ended up, that was when Vinny threw five picks. He did. We LSU fans refer to Angel Reese as Bayou Barbie, guys, and she <laughs> loves it. She trademarked yes. that nickname. She's going to make some money off of it. Yeah, I think it is. Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark was asked about the exchange, and she said, you know what? I remember what she said to me in the handshake line after the game, and all of it was complimentary. All of it was nice. That so, was Kim out Mulkey. of Caitlin Clark's Definitely. mouth yes. herself. Yes.
Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.